Hello everyone, my name is Mrs Dolling and I'll be teaching you your maths lesson today. It's lesson number 13 on fractions. First of all, let's go through the practice activity that you had at the end of the last session. You were asked, can you show this fraction using a number line? And what will the written fraction be? Well, looking at the arrows, I see that there are eight arrows and seven of them are shaded. So my number line is going to be split into eight equal parts. Now to show the number of arrows that are shaded, my arrow is going to be pointing at seven eighths. And the written fraction will be seven eighths. Well done if you got this at home. Let's go through the other practice activity that you had. Remember these panes of glass and the window and some of the panes of glass were broken. The first thing you had to do was show the fraction of panes of glass that were broken on a number line and to write the written fraction too. Well, there are nine panes of glass in total, so your number line should have been split into nine equal parts. And to show the number of panes of glass that are broken, your arrow should have been pointing to four ninths. And the written fraction is four ninths. Now, if you had a go at the extra bit that you had to do, you were asked, what fraction of the window pane did not break? Well, your number line would look the same, but this time the arrow would be pointing to five ninths because five of the window panes were not broken. And you would write this as five ninths. Well done at home if you manage to draw both of those number lines and have the arrows pointing at the correct place on the number line and write the correct fraction as well. Have a look at this bar model. What is the unit fraction? Well, the bar model has been divided into five equal parts, so the unit fraction is one fifth. How many one fifths are there? in three fifths. Let's use this stem sentence to help us answer. There are three one fifths in three fifths. Have a go at saying that at home with me. There are three one fifths in three fifths. Well done. I'm going to write an equation to show that if I have one fifth and another one fifth and another one fifth, then I have three one fifths. Have a look. One fifth and another one fifth and another one fifth equal three fifths. There is another way that I can write this equation. Three fifths equals one fifth and another one fifth and another one fifth. Now let's look at this on a number line. My number line has been divided into five equal parts. I'm going to count up in fifths starting at zero. Zero, one fifth, and another one fifth, and another one fifth. Altogether, I have three fifths. One fifth, add one fifth, add one fifth equals three fifths. There is another way you can write this equation. Three fifths equals one fifth, add one fifth, add one fifth. 
Let's have a go using a different shape and a different number line. First of all, what is our unit fraction? Well, my shape and my number line have been divided into nine equal parts. So my unit fraction is one ninth. Now let's count up in ninths to work out how much of the shape has been shaded. One ninth, and another one ninth, and another one ninth, and another one ninth make four ninths. How can we write this using repeated addition of the unit fraction? Well, one ninth, add one ninth, add one ninth, add one ninth equals four ninths. There's another way of writing this as an equation. Four ninths equals one ninth, add one ninth, add one ninth, add one ninth. Let's have a go using our eggs and our egg boxes. First of all, what's the unit fraction? Well, the egg box and the number line have been divided into 12 equal parts. So our unit fraction is 1 twelfth. Let's count up in twelfths. Remember to start at zero. Zero, one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. We have five twelfths. How would I write this using repeated addition of the unit fraction? Well, one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth equals five twelfths. There's another way that you can write this equation. Five twelfths equals one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth, add one twelfth. Well done if you were following along with that at home. Your first practice activity for this session is what repeated addition equation matches this number line? Let's have a look. Hmm. So you've got some jumps on the number line. What addition equation matches this number line? You might want to draw out this number line and the jumps, making it so that each jump on the number line is one centimetre wide and using a ruler to help you draw the number line. You can then write above each jump what is being added each time and then how much you have all together. Can you write the two different ways there are of making a repeated addition equation based on this number line. Your next practice activity is this. You have to work out whether this equation is true or false. Let's have a look at it. One six add one six equals two twelfths. Can you draw a number line to represent this equation? What do you notice? Can you explain your answer? Use the number line to help you explain your answer. I hope you have fun doing that at home and I will see you soon.